Hey all, Ryan here from Planetary Lapidary, and welcome to another episode of Furry Form Fridays, where I take rocks and fossils I find on the western shore of Lake Michigan, shine them up and make them look pretty. So this is usually the area that I pick from. I got a nice new little shelf there so I can put some more stuff up. You know, all my standing stones and my bigger rocks and ends and stuff. But this week what we're going to do is a different type of furry form, and we are going to do some fossils in some muriatic acid. So. What that does is it basically eats out all of the, you know, limestone and like mudstone that's in between the silicified fossils and then it makes them pop out. So what I'm hoping is that a lot of this brown will get eaten out and this will just have all these little nubs sticking out. I'm not sure, you know, it might, it just depends on what the tubes are made out of, but I have that syringopora and then I have this syringopora, you know, I, I'm hoping that it'll stay together but I'm not sure I haven't done too many of these and then I have these three chain corals this one which I'm hoping will turn out really good it's pretty solid and then this one which has all these little micro chains all over it so I'm hoping to just get all the mudstone and all the other stuff out of there and hopefully this all stays in I'm not 100% sure though but we'll see and then this is a darker mudstone or limestone chain coral so I want to see if I can eat some of that out of there and then the last two I have are these two horn corals um, I'm not sure what's gonna happen to this one I'm hoping just all the brown comes out and it looks really cool and then this one is kind of a big chunk of a horn coral and another one down here like kind of together in like a limestone matrix so I'm hoping some of that gets eaten out and then those stay like that too so I will get out into the garage what I have is these two buckets um, and then I have this inner bucket it's like this little basket that I found um, and then I took a handle from another plastic bucket and put it through and put some holes in the bottom so then that just makes it easier for getting them in and out of there so all you have to really do is put them in this basket and then just put them right down into the bottom and into the acid and you can be really slow and gentle with it and then when you're done with it, you can just lift it right out and it'll all drain out. And then you stick it in your bucket with the baking soda and that'll neutralize the acid. So I'm going to get out in the garage and get this all set up and I'll see you there. Okay, so I am all set up. I went about 50-50 on the acid. You're supposed to go a little less than that, but I'm not going to keep these in for too long. So I have my 50-50 of the muriatic acid there. And then I have a little bit more water with a bunch of baking soda in it over here so after I pull the basket out I can put it right in there so what I'm hoping for is when I set this down in there I'll get immediate some bubbles working but we will see so I'm just gonna set it in there super soft so it can just fill up the basket and its own weight can just go right down in the bottom Let's see do we got any bubbling going on right away a little bit I don't really have much light out here, but you can kind of see right there we go. We got some bubbles working. So that means the acid is working. So we're going to leave these in here for about 24 hours. And then I will check them and we'll see where they're at. See if we're going to put them in for longer or take them out. So we'll see it in 24 hours. Okay, so it's been just under 24 hours. As you can see, a lot of stuff got melted off of there. The water's just brown. But my bubbles have pretty much stopped. A couple little ones going now, but... I think I'm gonna leave it at that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna put it right over into the bucket with the baking soda and the water to kind of uh, neutralize the acid. So we'll take this guy out really slow. Ooh, I see a good one at least in there. Try to get some of this out of here. Just rinse it a little bit. And then we'll stick her over in the other one. Let her drip off just for a second. And then there you can see it all gets neutralized. Bubbles again. So I'm going to leave that in there for a couple hours. I'm going to neutralize this and get it cleaned out and then I'm going to put some more baking soda and water in this one and then I'm going to switch it over again and then I'm going to wash them off with regular water. So that'll take a little while but I will see you when that's all done. Okay so I got everything cleaned up. As you can see we got some good ones some duds so I'll just go over them one at a time here. So first we got this first chain coral which the matrix was obviously just too hard to get eaten out of there. 
So that one, I'm not sure what I'll do. Maybe I'll try to cut down the middle to salvage it a little bit, see if there's some cool patterns on the inside. So that was a dud. And we have this horn coral that I wouldn't say was a dud. It did clean off some of the brown, um, but it didn't eat this off. That's what I was hoping it would eat off, but that must just be harder than I thought. So that was, you know, maybe not a dud, maybe an in-between, still a cool little horn. Another one that I might cut right down the middle just to see if there's a cool pattern on the inside. Then we got this one. This was the one I had the highest hopes for, um, and it just did not do anything. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to do something else with that one. You know, it's got a really good full pattern in there. So I might try to cut the face off and shine it up maybe. But all in all, I'm disappointed in that one, but what can you do? Then we had this one, which is just a really intricately linked together chain coral. It did eat some of the mudstone out of there and some of the stuff out of there. You can kind of see some of the patterning there. So that one too, probably an in-between. You know, it didn't change much from what it looked like at the beginning, but it did, did you know, eccentricate some of those pockets in there like that right there in the bottom. But so not too bad. So then the first one we got that turned out really good. So this was the bottom piece of it. So it was being held onto that piece by some mudstone or something. It was this, this horn coral. So I think it was on there just like that and the whole inside just got eaten away. So I kind of am left with a cool, just little full horn coral. And then you can kind of see the side pattern of it there too. That's really cool. So I think that was a total success on that one. And then we got this guy, which turned out awesome as well. This is a syringopora, syringe coral, or pipe organ coral. You can see all the insides got eaten away. I just have to be really careful with this because it's really fragile. You can kind of see the full sides of the tubes there. That's awesome. So I, that's a really, really good one, better than I expected on that one. So we'll set that one down, and then we have the best one out of the whole batch. I'm gonna have to be super careful with it. So I'll show you the bad side first. So this side, I left some matrix in there. I didn't leave it in the acid because this was so thin, I didn't think it'd stay together if I, if I let all the stone get eaten out of the inside. So that's what that side looks like. Try to flip it, and then look at that. That is unbelievable right there. Like that's exactly what you want. So that'll be a perfect display piece, right? Like that, I'll make a little wood stand for it and it'll be perfect. And that's what I was shooting for. I didn't think this piece would turn out so good, but it definitely did. So that's what muriatic acid does to fossils that have a softer matrix to them. All right, so if you like this video, leave a like, hit subscribe if you haven't already. Stay tuned for some close-ups at the end and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.